Welcome to the November edition of Cornerstone Connect. We have a very special program planned just for you. Tom Hollis stops by to talk to us about principles for an uncertain future. And Cornerstone Cares missionaries George and Katherine Steiner come to share how you are making an impact in their ministry, Orphan Tree, and letters from the mailbag from you. All that and more coming up next. Welcome, I'm your host, Amanda Brocker, and I just have one question for you. Have you received your Hope Today newsletter in the mail? If not, please give us a call at 888-665-4483 or go to www.ctvn.org and let us know. We want to stay connected. I just have to say, hey, Valerie, you get kudos to our first Christmas card of the season. It arrived she wishing you a home filled with joy and special moments for this Christmas from Valerie. So we thank you. We're excited for the season. We'll all be out there shopping soon. Woohoo! But until then, we're going to be thankful and give much grace to God. Well, coming up next, Tom Hollis joins me revealing principles for an uncertain time. We are so excited, Tom, to talk to you, our COO here at Cornerstone Television that wears multiple hats, I know, because I've seen behind the scenes, but you wrote another amazing article, and I would love for you to bring that to life for all of us. Sure. Well, thank you, Amanda. Yeah, it's called Hello November, and uh, of course I got my jacket on because it's cooler, right? Things are changing, transitioning, and uh, you know, you think about it, leaves are mostly gone, but uh, you know, we have that time where the weather's getting cooler. Uh, we, we know we're going from summer, which I love, you know, bike riding and everything, love summer, but love the cooler weather too. And uh, it got me thinking about times of transition. Our nation is in a time of transition. In case you've missed it, there's a little thing called it? an election going on. You can't, it's well, you in know, our faces can't watch everywhere. any it's in the TV, billboards walking. can't watch YouTube, nothing <laughs> without, you know, it's everywhere. Uh, of course, the recent hurricanes uh, that uh, hit uh, you know, the United States, there's a lot of people in a lot of different transition. And so it got me thinking about transition times or battles. Maybe battles is a better way to say it. Mm -hmm. Because you know the famous story where, where King Jehoshaphat was about to go into battle. And he did it a very unusual thing. What did he do? He sent those worshipers out. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I just can't imagine like a World War II General Patton saying, you know, let's uh, let's get Frank Sinatra out there and sing on the way, you know, as as it just seemed like such an odd thing, but it was so important to uh, what all of us have to do is, you know, recognizing the Lord's uh, the Lord's sovereignty, let's say, over all that. I mean, uh, you're in your own life. Have you seen that kind of thing where you praise Him before the answer? Yes, many times. I think, you know, you sign up for Christianity and you're like, I have joined the Rainbows and Lollipops Club, you know? <laughs> like everything's going to be good from here on out. I, I've made Jesus the Lord of my life. I would Jesus, love to be in the, the Rainbows and Lollipops life. Club. <laughs> I'm like, and then I told the Lord, I did not sign up for this, you yeah. know? But it's like, you no, know, his idea is us looking to him, keeping our eyes on him, no matter what we face. Yeah, I mean, I can remember someone saying when I was a young man, someone saying, life is hard. We shouldn't just, and I'm like, yeah, but we love Jesus, you know? And of course, when you're 20, you haven't been through all the, some people have, but a lot of times you haven't been through all the, the challenges and, and the things that you will face. But I, I thought of three things as they, in fact, let me read this scripture to you. Can I read, the, the scripture says, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. 
as they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Mm -hmm. And I thought of the first thing is that they praised before the victory came. Yes. They praised uh, God before the victory. You know, God is worthy of our praise mm -hmm. no matter what the outcome is. If we have a wonderful crushing victory or if we have a crushing defeat, God is still worthy of our praise. So we have to make sure that we put that first. God's plan, his purposes, all that's important, but the most important thing is who he is. That's right, so true. There's, he is that sure foundation. Yeah. If our eyes are on our circumstances, and I have definitely done that in this <laughs> life, and I can tell you, it led to frustration, it led to anger, it led to everything that is not a fruit of the Spirit. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like, and your flesh, when you let your eyes lead you, your flesh then is the one in control. And yeah. I'm like, oh, it gets ugly, y'all. You know, it can get ugly in the household, yeah. the people yeah. you, you love the most. And it's just like, Lord, help us to really, truly die to ourself and to look to him so that we can walk in the spirit and in truth. So when we realize that, when we realize that the God, uh, you know, is ultimately in control, then we praise him no matter what. But they were praising him, hoping for a good outcome, certainly. Second thing is they declared God's holiness. You know, the, the people of God, uh, we, we serve a, a different type of Lord. He is a holy Lord. And we need to walk in a holy manner. You That's know, right. we, we can't uh, succumb. You know, you see all these political ads on all the name call and everything. We can't succumb to anything like that. We move forward in the holiness of God and declaring his holiness, that he's a righteous God. Mm -hmm. What's great about a righteous God is he is going to give righteousness uh, to the situation. That's right. no matter, and, and we need the, that righteousness. We need to have that righteousness mm -hmm. in every situation. And finally, they declared God's love. Isn't that great? Is it, talk about ultimate way to battle. The Christian battles in love. The Christian does not battle in hate, certainly. Does not even battle in, uh, in uh, superiority or anything, but in servant love, for even for the ones he's battling against, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's right. And you know, so these three principles, you know, praise before the victory, declare God's holiness, declare God's love. You know, love is a weapon the enemy can't defeat, right. you know, because love can't be defeated. Such a powerful word. You know, it kind of reminds me of the story from John 15, where Jesus is telling us about abiding in the vine and staying connected to yeah. the vine. It's impossible for us to walk out, you know, the fruit of God in our life apart from being, you know, abiding, remaining in the vine. And that's in Christ where our eyes stay on him regardless of our circumstance that's around right. and, us. And we're going to have these times of transition and these battles. You know, here, this was an Old Testament battle with swords and spears. We're not gonna have that, but we're gonna have a spiritual battle. You're gonna have a spiritual battle. All of us have had that. And so we need to have those principles of staying focused on God when we're going into the battle. Because I have to tell you, I can get my eyes off of God easily, get them on myself, mm -hmm. on the situation, start feeling like there's no way out of this, but there always is with That's God. That's right, we yeah. have no excuse to disconnect from the vine of Christ. I'm That's like, right. just stay connected. Our encouragement to you is no matter what we see with this month's elections, like stay connected to the vine, don't, step out of your love walk, That's you know, right. cause then we get into all kind of mess. We yeah. want to be steady just on that firm foundation. That's of right. Jesus. And you know, some people that are battling in the, uh, in the field of the Lord, in the ministry, are people that we support through Cornerstone Cares. And uh, I had recently the opportunity to talk with George and Catherine Steiner of Orphan's Tree. They're doing amazing work uh, around the world and seeing God do some powerful things. Watch this. One of the great things about being involved with Cornerstone Television is you get involved with Cornerstone Cares because a portion of any funds that come into Cornerstone goes to Cornerstone Cares and we support missionaries all around the world doing wonderful things for the kingdom of God. And George and Catherine Steiner are with us. They're with Orphan's Tree, a long time guys, long time ministry that we've supported. Actually this year it's 30 years. 
Praise the Lord. She's been so. doing some great things. And I have to say this, Catherine, you are Russ and Norma's daughter. So <laughs> Why? Because I look like them? <laughs> no, it's just that, that, talk about a connection. Tell us yes. about uh, being, you know, the, the founders of our station's daughter and what that was like. Well, just uh, part of a loving family and uh, we're walking now in the favor and the blessing. Yeah, of um, everything that they did. Yes. I, I mean, we're all walking in that yes. favor. Yes. Um, but George, tell us about Orphan's Tree and what ministry you have done this in this time period that you've been involved with Cornerstone. And, and we'll talk in a minute about some new things the Lord's opening up as well. Well, 30 years ago, we started uh, ministry in Russia, uh, working at that time primarily with orphanages. But over the years of transition and uh, changes in Russia as well, uh, we work primarily with older young people coming out of orphanages. So at 16 or 17 years old, orphans leave the orphanage and they're on their own. And they've moved from being totally dependent on other people to make decisions for them to overnight having to make their own independent decisions. And frankly, it's a bridge too difficult to cross. And so we step in uh, to help uh, guide and walk alongside them uh, as they do that with uh, not only the love of Christ, but really practical kinds of things like life skill training. Uh, we have a mentorship program and many other programs really just helping them to adapt and adjust to life. And, and they have not been prepared for that. They have not been prepared for that decision-making process by the, by the orphanage or by the programs that they were in. Um, so what have you seen? You know, give me a, a, a person or a, a story that just kind of sticks out to you. Well, there's so many, of course. Yeah. Uh, and the ones, one of the things that I love is we're really about long-term relationships. Yeah. And so from the very beginning, uh, you know, I know kids that were six or seven years old that are now in their 30s yeah. uh, that we've re maintained relationships with. And I love it that some of those people are on our staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have all staff members who are Russian, uh, which is helpful in these days. Uh, but, you know, for instance, Natasha, who is actually our program manager over three regions. Right. Uh, and she, I met her when she was eight years old. I actually put a pair of shoes on her uh, at the orphanage I went to. I don't remember that because I probably put shoes on 30 or 40 kids that night. Yeah. But she remembers that I was the one that did that. And uh, she's someone we're very proud of, of course. Uh, she's brilliant, mm -hmm. uh, but she learned English and is very fluent and uh, it's just a great uh, role model for a lot of other orphans. And that's what we like to see, is orphans turning around and ministering to others as well, not just take receiving ministry. Yeah, I mean, just the, the thought of that, of someone, uh, all of a sudden their gifts are allowed to flower, allowed to grow into, into a new role, like with Natasha. Uh, Catherine, just over all these years, is there anything that sticks out to you? I mean, you've had to let this guy go and travel a lot. I know you've gone sometimes, but just what's it been like to be involved in the lives of these young people? Well, I, I would say my purpose more is to support with prayer mm -hmm. because I don't go as often as he does. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time I went, um, we ministered to some of the orphan couples, their children. Okay. So because I was a teacher and I worked with younger children, that was really fun. Yeah. Uh, teaching them some skills, how they could help their, the education of their young children. So uh, yeah. chil the orphans then have children. So instead of uh, that circle of orphan, and orphan having an orphan having an orphan, giving them training to be families, a lot of what he does also gives them skills. Yeah, because they wouldn't life. have any uh, any experience with that. Well, they don't have the support up. of parents. Yeah. You know, my daughters, when they were raising their children, when they were young, calling me all the time, Mom, what do I do about this? <laughs> Help me with this, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And they, if they don't have that input, you know, they get that input from uh, the family centers and the counselors that they have on staff. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now. God has obviously blessed everything you're doing in Russia and, 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 and it's all about the gospel too, right? right? It's all about sharing the love Absolutely. of God with them. Uh, but what is the new situation that's happening with you and, and, and as far as traveling to Russia and a new area that God's opening? Well, five years ago this month, 
Uh, we had several groups that were over that are church volunteers and uh, go over in August often to do what we call orientation camps. They're helping kids that are coming out of the orphanage uh, as they go to their tech schools and just, again, helping with some uh, basic needs, but building relationships so that there's the long-term uh, relationships that can be maintained uh, through our staff there. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've had one church group that's gotten into Russia in the last five years, actually wow. actually from Zelyanople, uh, yeah. he, he, not too far from here. And, uh, and so that's been a bit of a challenge. Uh, gratefully, all of our staff, as I mentioned, are Russian. And so we've been able to maintain ministry and grow ministry. Actually, we added a region uh, in the last three years, uh, which is we're really praising the Lord and grateful for that. I just uh, want to say something. That, that's really a strong uh, argument to make sure you're raising up local uh, right. uh, you know, people well, from that nation. And we have tremendous leadership. And that's really what ministry is about, is empowering people, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. to use their gifts and skills. Um, so what's happening in uh, Kazakhstan? So, so uh, over the past year, we've been praying about and thinking about should we consider uh, opening up a new uh, field? And uh, as we looked at different things and prayed about it, Kazakhstan became a fairly obvious choice. It needed to be some country that has some friendly relationships with Russia uh, in the current climate. Um, and uh, so in July, uh, we took a team of staff and board members over uh, to do some assessment and find out, is there a need for the type of ministry that we have, uh, ministering to older orphans specifically? Yeah. And uh, there's a great openness with the missionaries that are there, with the churches that are there, with local uh, Kazakh uh, leadership as well. And so over the next year, we're going to be doing uh, some partnership with the intent of uh, opening a ministry center. And when we talk about ministry centers, I need to explain to our audience that that's primarily a place where young people can come to. It's a physical building yeah. uh, where we provide basic needs, but also have Christian staff members there that are uh, meeting their spiritual needs as well. And so that's, uh, in the U.S., we might call that an after-school program. It's mm -hmm. two to seven o'clock is our primary times. Uh, we always have a good meal uh, for them, a healthy, yeah, uh, and, and yeah. because that attracts young people as well. Uh, you have to remember to get 17 year old boys to come voluntarily to a place, good to have food. Yeah. And so uh, we, we do that, but, uh, but we, it's through relationships really. Well, I mean, I love, when I first heard about this, you know, the, obviously the, the kind of little bit of closed door to you uh, in, in Russia now, you think, oh, that's so, but God opens up a new, and I just love your heart that you are finding a new place, uh, finding a new area to minister. You know, it's always uh, exciting, but it's also always a little scary yeah. uh, because it's the unknown, you know, yeah. and it's that, uh, that combination I think is where we have to be dependent on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us uh, because our own experiences in Russia may not be exactly the same. There are similarities uh, with Russia, language and some culture things. But on the other hand, it's a Muslim culture. It's a very different culture mm -hmm. in many ways too. So um, we have a lot of learning to do and that's part of uh, the, the excitement of it is also learning uh, a new country and a new culture. Well, I know that God, I think he's excited. You know, he says, hey, I've got them. I, I, let, let me put them over here. Uh, George and Catherine, thank you so much for all that you've done through Orphan's uh, Tree. And we will continue to support and also pray. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, can I just say real quickly, yes, just a great appreciation to Cornerstone Cares. One of our things that I mentioned is long-term relationships. Yeah. And it, we don't believe that we can let kids down uh, who have been broken hearted for broken relationships over the years. And Cornerstone has also been a long term relationship and we're right. so grateful for that. So yes. thank you. Well, you're welcome and we're so grateful for you. You know, God, when one door shuts, there's another door that opens and right. they're able to do this, this ministry in a new country where Russia is kind of closed off to them now. Uh, I just love what the Orphan's Tree is doing. I just love that we're involved with Cornerstone Cares. Whenever someone gives here, we just want to 
show them that uh, that 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 funds is going out throughout the whole world preaching the gospel. That's right, making an impact. And all that is made possible because of faithful donors, just like you. You know, Tom, I know that you see a lot of the big picture of what Cornerstone Television is able to do. And yeah. the people who support us, we have the very real realization that we would not be able to do this without right. them. I just want to say again, as Amanda just did, thank you so much, those of you that support Cornerstone, because we are able to bring the love of God to so many people because of you. That's right. We're, we're kind of like King Jehoshaphat's like army of Judah, the going out, the worshipers, the praisers, That's right. letting God be known. Well, this is a wonderful time as always, Tom, and thank you for writing such an awesome article for all of us to receive. Thanks, Amanda. Well, we're going to continue with more of Cornerstone Connect. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other, one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing, deepen your relationship with Him, and propel you forward. Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek Him anew, rest your mind in his counsel and hear his wisdom for your next season even more you'll witness his word manifest in your life and return to his promises for you ask for prophetic reset when you give in support of cornerstone television today every gift helps us to spread the gospel through christian programming call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org donate My name is uh, Georgia, and I'm from Morgan, Pennsylvania, um, near Washington County, and I'm glad to be here today. In 2014, I was taking care of my mother, who was dying of cancer and COPD. She was a smoker. I was a smoker. I was a Christian, but I wasn't whole, you know, and complete. I'm still not. We decided to keep her at home. We really wanted to keep her at home and care for her. Well, she wanted to stay at home so she could smoke. <laughs> She didn't want to go to the nursing home. And then we could smoke and we were comfortable at home. It's hard to go to a nursing home and visit your mother every day. My sister would come home and we would watch a true crime show. And then one night we scared my mother so bad she couldn't sleep watching this true crime show. And she started praying that we would watch another channel. And the preacher would come and visit and we asked some we couldn't go to church because she was housebound and I had to stay with her. We couldn't leave her alone. And he didn't know what channel could, we could watch. And I didn't have a smartphone and we never heard a cornerstone. And one day I'm in my bed, laying in my bed, and my mom's praying that we watch something else besides this true crime show. <laughs> and it scared me one night and I couldn't sleep at it. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I need, we need to go to church and we can't go to church. Can we please have a TV channel? I, I don't know how to work the TV. I'm not real high tech, my mom wasn't. But I'm in bed and I'm praying, I'm taking a break from taking care of my mother. And I said, please God, I need a Christian station. And something said, I believe it was 805 at the time. And I pressed 805 and on came Cornerstone. Out of all those channels, God answered that I would pick 805. He gave me that thought. I didn't hear a voice. And we've been watching it ever since. My mom watched it and then it helped her. Like we would call the prayer line and as she was dying, it gave her great comfort. And she did have the ultimate healing and she was ready. She was ready, but Cornerstone gave us a beautiful end to her life. I think we called every day. We called the prayer line. And what I found from the prayer line and I became a partner back then, and I was even more blessed. It was the time of Jubilee, and I paid my house off in the year of Jubilee, just like they said on TV. I can't remember much about it. It gave my mom a beautiful end to her life. And I've heard the, the TV, Christian TV is like the Air Force. We were housebound, and I think of how many people that are housebound that need this, need this, because there was no way we could go to church. She couldn't go down steps. And it was such a blessing. And Jesus worked through it. 
and Jesus came into our house. It brought Jesus into our house. And I've changed, I quit smoking uh, because of the ministries I follow. It's like more and more Jesus, more and more God. And it's so positive and I was able to quit smoking. I lost some weight, I watch what I eat now. And through everything, through all my followings and who I follow in the churches, and especially Cornerstone and the prayer group, I wake up like I'm excited to be alive. And it's because of this constant taking in of the positivity in Jesus. And from my different followings, I've come to know that Jesus wants me to be happy, joyous, and free and enjoy life. You know, the prayer line, I, we, we had a couple of church projects and Rich and Crystal helped me. I would call and pray recently. I would I prayed about that and they taught me, don't run ahead of the Holy Spirit because I get an idea and I'm ready to go. And at that moment, I found that the prayer line also kind of counsels in, in godly manners. Um, they're godly people. It's like talking to a friend who has the same friend, Jesus. I called about all my family issues, different family people. And it's a comfort to know that I can call that in, in any time at night and uh, be in fellowship with another believer. I feel Jesus is anointed at this station. And I know that if I give my money, God will give it back. I, I know that completely, but I want to put it somewhere where someone who's housebound can get what I got, what my, my mother got, what my sister got, someone who's alone and scared and, you know, maybe struggling. They can't make it to church and and they can have the Air Force, like Amy Schaefer said, it's the Air Force come in and, and help them. And, and I like to be part of that. In the prayer line, the prayer line, I feel that I've been given so much to Cornerstone that I, I can't give enough. Well, I always enjoy our time together. I hope you did as well. I got to go back to the mailbag. Thank you to those of you who write into this. This came from Gary. Thank you for Origins. I watch it every week and regularly recommend it. You know, thank you so much. That's one of the biggest ways to get the word out there about Cornerstone Television is by you recommending your favorite programs, the things that speak to you. This comes from Dan and oh, this is to Ray Hypel with Origins. He said he watches all of our programs and the re-airs and he watches it on Lighthouse TV that uh, streams out of Harrisburg. So we are so thankful, Dan, to have you in our viewing audience. And if y'all haven't checked out Origins program, you need to do that because we all need to realize God is our creator. He is our maker and he loves you so much. I thank each and every one of you for writing in. It blesses us to know that God is making a difference in your life. Thank you so much. Thank you.